Um, and so we had this amazing date, and then um, so that was like a couple hours, and I was so so nervous. I was like shaking like a leaf because I it was the first time that I like had gone on a date. And I didn't know how to tell somebody I was going through a divorce, and I was so nervous. But I finally did, and he like didn't he like took it so well, like it didn't it didn't bother him at all. And um, and then we ended up um, we had to uh, everything was shut down, and we had to go to the bathroom. And again, you're probably gonna be like, why did you do this? But it was, I think you know it was extreme circumstances but uh, so I don't live that far from where we were and so and we both also were really thirsty and first we just we tried to go to this little grocery store to get water and hopefully go to the bathroom but of course they weren't letting anyone use the bathroom and they didn't have any water because it was pandemic and everybody you know took all the water <laughs> so I was like well I don't live that far from here <laughs> so we went back to my place and this is after now we're like talking like I don't know three hours or something and um uh, we ended up, you know, just sitting on the couch and talking and then he went and uh, we were there for so long and then he ended up grabbing food and then we ended up watching a movie and kind of like cuddling on the couch and it was a lot longer than you would ever advise for a first date. <laughs> but, and I was like, oh my God, I did all the things wrong. Um, and then, um, but that night he texted me right away and he was like, oh my gosh, that was like, um, the best, you know, first date I've ever been on. And he was like, I can't believe that was nine hours. It felt like it flew by. And then he continued to text um, and talk to me um, every day. And then even before that, though, actually, I, so we had masked on the, on the app. I had messed, he had put his Instagram on his app or his profile. I had added him. That's how we actually talked more, um, be, oh, that's what it was, is that he didn't see my profile on Bumble. That's why I don't remember the prompt question, because I saw his profile. I had added him on Instagram because he had his handle. I reached out to him through Instagram, and then we talked on there. That's where he asked me to go on a date, and then um, we did, obviously, the date. And then uh, I remember before he even asked me on a date, I actually told him, I'm like, hey, I'm a little old-fashioned, like I, you know, like when a guy – asked me on a proper date so he called me and asked me on a proper date and that's how the date ended up happening and then we talked and texted and facetimed um for about a month and a half um and even in those he really opened up to me um a lot about again like his trauma his past relationships he kind of uh he has a history of like substance abuse he told me about a previous girlfriend so he was about a year sober when i had gone on a date with him and he had a girlfriend that had encouraged him to go to uh, AA, and um, that was his longest relationship, which was like, I think two years, and I want to say it was, I don't know, a couple of years out of college, but he's been in a lot of relationships, it sounds like, that were short term. Um, so the, the two that he had told me about prior to when he and I had gone on a date, um, both of them lasted between like three to four months, it sounds like, and they both had kids. And what's interesting is he has this pattern of behavior um, clearly, because after, so he and I, like I told you, we, you know, so for a month and a half, like, talked, and then all of a sudden, he kind of, like, fizzled out, and I was, I didn't know what was going on, but he had told me that his brother's best friend had passed away, and he's, they were all very close, and so I assumed it was that, um, and I did a text to, like, say, you know, I'm sorry you're going through this, if there's anything, you know, you need, let me know, I'm here, um, and I kind of, like, gave him space. Um, and then like, I don't know, six days went by, hadn't heard from him. So I did a little like, Hey, um, you know, hope you're doing okay. Uh, and then he told me like what happened with, you know, the friend and, um, and then he was like, how are you? And then, you know, I said a quick response back and then he never, and I, and then I think I asked him back, like, how are you or something, or how are you handling? I forget what I asked him and he never responded. And then like a week later, all of a sudden on his Instagram, I see that there's this girl that he posts a picture of. And I was like, what the F? <laughs> and of course I was a little hurt. Right. But I was like, so, you know, and then I inquisitive mind, well, mind wanted to know. So I like kind of, you know, looked at this girl's picture or whatever. And, um, 
she had a private account on Insta, but like I saw, you know, I went on Facebook and I like, looked at her and she's one of these girls that you talk about in your podcast um, and in your work where she's, you know, got like the duck lips and has her profile picture and like just seems very insecure. And, um, and so, and she has a child um, who's like, I think five or something like that. And, um, and she's his age. So like, um, you know, he's a couple years older than I am. Um, and then, so I knew that wasn't going to last. I just kind of felt it internally. And I, so basically the whole summer I didn't hear from him, but he would occasionally, you know, uh, watch my Instagram stories or like a post here and there. And then it was at the end of August, he sends me a message on Instagram. Um, just kind of, you know, like, Hey, how have you been? And I didn't, I looked at it, I opened it, but I didn't respond for like two weeks because I was like, are you kidding me, dude? Um, But when I finally did respond, I said, hey, surprised to hear from you since you went radio silent, um, but things are going well or something like that. Um, And then um, there was a few exchanges back and forth. uh, And then I think um, he kind of like, went silent again because it seemed like he tried to work things out with that girl and get back with her, but obviously it didn't work out because then he reached out another time. And he, at that point I said, Hey, Oh, he wanted to know like how, how work was and stuff like that. And I said, you know, work's going well, but I, I said, you know, it was really great to spend time with you. I'm more of a face to face type of girl. Um, it would be great to hear your voice, um, or spend time with you or something like that. And I was like, you know, give me a call or, or, you know, let's, let's, or something. I forget what exactly I said, but it was something along those lines. So then fast forward. So then basically it was a lot of like, kind of, I don't know, just like texts that didn't really go anywhere. Like I would, they were like flirty, but like he didn't really take any sort of action. Um, But then at one point I was like, kind of like, was like, pretty much friend zone <laughs> because I was like, okay, this man's clearly not, not stepping up. So whatever. And then at one point I, I didn't say like, Oh, I at least actually there was one time where I think I said something like, well, good to know we can still be friends. Or, I forget. I said something like that. And I forget what it was in regards to. Cause like I said, this was a while ago now. Um, but then at one point I did ask him for some tips on, I had a, a shoot coming up and I needed to like, you know, um, like basically being a bikini essentially and so I was for my work you know and so I um I asked him what uh I could do if he had any tips and he gave me some tips and then we kind of talked back and forth and then now we're all the way up to like December of the past December and um you know I kind of made it like known I said you know like something about like I I you know seem to forget um, how handsome you were. It would be great talking, you know, spending time with you or something like that. And then the, then the flirting kind of like kicked up a notch and it was very much like, you know, I asked, uh, I had asked what his plans were for the new year. Um, and he was like, Oh, I'll be in Mexico, but I'd love to see you after that. Um, and then when he came back, he messaged me and he was like, I really want to see you. What's your schedule like? And that happened for about every week for about four weeks. And he was like, I really want to see you. What's your schedule? When, you know, when are we getting together? Da, 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 but never took any action. So then I got to a point where I was like, so are you actually going to make plans with me? Or are you just going to keep stalking my schedule? And then um, he had asked for about a very specific day. And I told him that particular day, this is now, now we're up to February of this year. And I basically said to him, I was like, uh, cause he had asked me about, uh, like a, a specific day. I said, I have, you know, meetings up until this point, but I'm fairly free at, at, in like early afternoon. So right before that, I sent him a message being some, saying something like, uh, assuming since I haven't heard back from you, we're not spending time together. It doesn't make sense to just text and not meet up. I was like, I don't believe in words. I believe in actions. I was like, we definitely had a genuine, uh, connection. Um, I was like, you know, it's a shame because, um, oh, and yeah, I, I said something like, um, uh, it would have felt really good to see you. I was like, but obviously we're not on the same page. I wish you all the best. And he immediately responded back within like a couple hours and said like, hi, I'm sorry. I had a terrible day. I didn't respond to that. And I went off and I went on a trip, a skiing trip. And then 
um, at like 8 a.m. on a Saturday, he sends me a message being like, good morning. I really just want to apologize for my flakiness the last few months. Um, it's complicated and a lot to talk about, but I want you to know that I'm really sorry. I did want to come see you several times, but my personal issues were preventing me from doing so. Um, and he basically said he wasn't in a good place um, mentally or, you know, emotionally, and that um, he's like, I think you're a really great person and a great friend, and I just wanted you to know that. Hope you're doing well, XO. And I said, I was in the middle of, like, you know, like I said, on the scheme trip, so I said, I want to respond to this, but I'll get back to you, or I'm in the middle of something, and I'll get back to you when I can. He said, okay. And then I ended up sending him a message back saying, you know, it was great to hear from him and that I'm grateful, you know, that he's um, able to like express his thoughts and feelings. And I appreciate his willing to, you know, acknowledge his shortcomings. And I, you know, um, basically want to be supportive of him, but since his pattern of behavior, like seemed to happen a lot and there was a, there's a disconnect that like really left me confused. Um, and then I think I ended it with something like, you know, I apologies are great and all, but actions speak louder than words. I was like, it depends, it, or it matters what you do from here. Um, and you know, making your intentions genuine. Uh, I was like, it seems like you're having a difficult time and you, I hope you're able to work through things, but I do think you're a great guy and I didn't want to get closer to you if you didn't know what you wanted. Um, and then I said, I hope I'm doing well. Thank you. And I hope you're doing better. And that's, where we're, we're at. Um, and to give you a little bit more um, about what ended up happening is, so when he went on that trip, it turns out he obviously was talking to some other girl because then he posted a picture from that trip um, and this girl come and then he said, like, missing the beaches or something. Um, and this was, like, a, I don't know, back in February, I think, or March, maybe it was March. Um, and then he uh, and the girl commented and said, I miss, I miss our view. And then so there was this other girl, not the one from last summer, <laughs> but this okay, other girl. I, I, also, okay, we don't even need to hear about the other girls, okay? Okay. Yeah. I want to know um, where you are now in terms of what it is that you are looking for and what you want. So I've been on dates with other guys besides him, obviously. And there was really no connection, but I see, like, how he, he just is kind of all over the place and, like, really messy. But, like, we had such a great connection and a great first date. And I, like, I really liked him. Um, and so what's funny is earlier today, so we haven't been in contact, and I, I told you about my last message. Um, and then I, and then earlier today, he, we're not connected on Facebook, and he sent me a friend request on Facebook today. <laughs> and so okay, that's more about that's more about him I want to know what it is that you are looking for from him you started out by saying that you wanted something just for fun and what role social media plays um, and down the road, what could happen? Right. I'm going to tell you all about that, and I really appreciate you going through all of the the trajectory of like the last year and a few months because it's really going to be insightful for others listening to it. And I also think it's going to help you quite a bit understand what's going on. Again, I want to ask, though, before all that, what are you hoping to have from this, and where do you want this to go? So I initially, obviously, when I first went out with him in those first, you know, couple months, I was like, this could be somebody that I feel like I could, I could potentially have some sort of future with. But then after his pattern of behavior and the way, just the way he is, I was like, well, maybe he's somebody I can just have fun with, and as he you know, maybe gets himself together, then, I don't know, maybe down the road there could be something more serious. However, I also personally am like, I'm not going to wait around forever, and I need someone that's serious now. So I personally am kind of at a place where my divorce is not finalized. I'm, while I am looking for somebody that could potentially, you know, be more, I 
think that, you know, I want to be with somebody also that I could just, you know, have something more casual with. Um, but I also don't want to necessarily get emotionally invested. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's really hard to do. Um, if it's especially, I mean, I'm not opposed to seeing where it would go, but I do think that it's really difficult for females to have something casual, but it's like, I feel, I don't know. I, I'm also not the type of girl that I, I'm, I can't just jump around from guy to guy. And I had a real connection with this guy and, um, I just want to be able to, have something and see where it goes, but I don't know if that would necessarily be somebody that I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to be my future husband. <laughs> but if everything would worked out, it would maybe could lead to that if I felt like he was the type of guy that wouldn't like, you know, cheat or like disappear or <laughs> okay. things like that. Okay. So this is where we get to the heart of it, and I'm going to take you back uh, to when you first met, and I also want to know one very specific question. At what point, if ever, did you have sex? We didn't. We didn't even kiss. Got it. So, yes, you're right. I don't recommend Bumble, and simply because Bumble is filled with consumers. If you've read my book, mm -hmm. you know that consumers are not bad men. They are just men and men who are not ready, willing, or capable of having any kind of real commitment or certainly not going to be peacocks for you, which is good that we talked about earlier. So... What happened, in, in Bumble, the woman does the reaching out. And right then and there, that flips how things naturally feel good to a man. Because men are all about the three C's. They're about challenge, competition, conquering. And they are hunters. They don't want to be, quote, unquote, hunted. They want to do the hunting. And we can say, well, that's kind of splitting hairs. But energetically, if you know or if you do anything about energetic work, it takes the natural order of things and turns it upside down. So it's why I don't recommend Bumble. And I certainly work with women who have used Bumble, but it's – and. I assume there are always eclipses that come from Bumble, but it's not useful if you want things to go the distance, typically, and most generally speaking. Now, you know that I don't recommend, um, you, you, did, you did a lot of uh, male energy stuff in reaching out to him, believe it or not, any kind of that is male energy stuff. And that can sound super, super, quote unquote, old fashioned. The problem is, is that we can get anything we want. We are so lucky that we are modern women living in a first world country. Most typically when I'm talking to somebody here on this podcast. They're in a first world country, so to speak, that we have all manner of freedoms and we can really do and be the woman that we want to be and the things we want to do. So we can do all the reaching out that we want. We can do all the pursuing that we want. And what will typically happen is that we get a lot of sex if we want it and nothing more. And that's just the natural order of things because of what you know I talk about here being in one category or the other. You presented yourself in the Madonna category. 
Do you know what I mean by that, Liz? I do only from reading you <laughs> and listening to you. <laughs> it's from Freud's Madonna Whore Complex, which is now uh, referred to as the Madonna Whore Dichotomy because it is not a complex. It is completely inherent in the male being to put us in one or the other category, meaning woman to have fun with only or woman to be looked at as possible wife and mother material and certainly to be quote unquote respected. So you were put in the first category because of your no sex action. However, there was a lot that was seriously confusing to him about that. And very male energy. Things like, and, and you said it yourself, saying things like, well, I only want to be with someone who has a bachelor's degree. Um, showing that you're willing to deal with his quote-unquote nonsense and still answering him at all, that's something that a woman in the first category doesn't typically, in the male mind, he doesn't compute that. The woman in the first category doesn't do that. You see, it's very black and white for the men. And it sucks for us completely. But when we confuse them, we lose them. It's that simple. They are very, very black and white. So you were saying certain things, but yet answering him. And what that connotes to the man is that no matter what you are saying, you are staying. It was clear, absolutely crystal clear, that he was with a woman in another category getting sex. She's in the other category, perhaps, in his... Now, I'm talking only from the male mind. I'm not casting any aspersions at all. In the real world, in reality, there is no category. There is no woman who is just one or the other. That is the male brain and how they view us. And that is what is so ultimately awful about it. But we have to deal with what is, not what we would like. So, you added him on Instagram. Yeah. Not a good idea. There's so many confusing things here. Telling him you're old-fashioned. You said, I was, I'm a bit old-fashioned. But then you add him on Instagram. He gets to see you. He, um, you, you pursue in terms of sending text and answering his stuff and seeing that he's with another woman rather than just cutting him off. You see, that's what the man expects from a woman in the first category. This is what is so mm, really damned about it. Because I understand completely you we're seeing the whole of someone, seeing, you know, and giving him um, uh, not excuses, but, but leeway for what was going on in his life and things he was doing. Men, when they, when they are buyers, they behave like buyers. When they are consumers, they behave like consumers. And they will treat you in when they're in a consumer state, in whatever category you show yourself to be, to the degree that you show it. Otherwise, they're just confused. And he was very, very confused. And here is what I think is going to help you very specifically, Liz, down the road is that if you are working with a counselor, you need to be working on the fact that you are very attracted to pigeons. Hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
the fact that you get that, what do you think I might say about where you could go from here with him? <laughs> to get rid of him? <laughs> <laughs> And it's not, it's not the fact of either getting rid of him or not. It's that we must learn to live by our word with men. And you did something really great, which I forget exactly when in the trajectory of this, but you said, you know, no harm, no foul, so to speak, but all the best to you. And then immediately mm -hmm. he reached out. And here's what women must know above all. It is the mere answering of anything after you say all the best that keeps the man in the consumeristic state. It is just the fact that you answer because then he knows he can get back to whatever you had before. It is so not even in our realm of thinking, but this is how men connote our actions. Because men, they, they live by their decisions, not by their emotions. So when they would say, I'm done, all the best, that's it. And it will be it for a super long time for that man. And, and probably ever, if he deigns to say it. Most don't say it. Most instead, ghost. And don't tell you. Or do things mm -hmm. like your ex. I'll come home with a bogus um, divorce papers because I want her to pull the trigger. So it does matter what you do from here. Should there be any possibility of more with him down the road? And it's certainly not now. You were a great ear to him. You showed him, unfortunately, this is exceedingly confusing. A woman in the first category, she knows what she wants. She makes up her mind when she says, I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't have an X degree. You've got to be super careful what you say because then you've got to live by it. You didn't. You continued on. You brought him home. You had a nine-hour date. For the man, it's just, yeah, he had that great time and that's it. From there on out, there is really nothing indicating that this man is in any state other than being an ultimate consumer. He is not ready, willing, or able to put in any kind of work to pursue you, to do anything with you at all. Showed nothing. He's having fun with other women who are likely giving him sex. Would you say that's probably true? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you must put yourself to have any possibility of anything in the future. You must live by your word. And now you must simply show it. You can say it one more time, and then absolute no contact until, until such time as the man does something. Texting is not doing something. That we have to get away from. Texting is nothing. It's not talking. It's not action. It's not anything. When I say doing, so there's no misleading of this, I mean send you texts about um, I was an idiot, I, I don't want to lose my chance, I blah, blah, blah. And he keeps sending these and you don't answer at all. I mean 
ever because the mere answering gets him out of his feelings and he goes, phew, okay, now I can relax. I can get her to answer. That's all. The actual no contact gets a man into any real feelings and presents a real challenge so he will actually do something. I would dare say it is an absolute waste of your time for that and I'll tell you why. Because you will find yourself, even if he does step up and do that in order to get you, and thank God he hasn't, because then you'd be in for some real heartache. But if he did, he is not a peacock. And when, and I would dare say he's a pigeon and feeling like it, and it will go nowhere. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. The wow is what? What are you thinking? I mean, you just make so much sense. <laughs> Uh, it's like, why are there not more people that teach what you teach? Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, I think that there are not I, more people. There are not more people because we have been sold a bill of goods as modern women. It's very, very unfortunate. And guess who's hurt by it? Not men mm-hmm. at all. Men are, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. You know what? I will take that back a little bit, a little caveat on that. Men need, more than anything in life, a purpose. They need it in their vocation, in their advocation, and in their personal life. Without it, They are ships without rudders, and they are all over the place. And we are seeing it more and more because with the demise of our society relationship-wise, they are not having the purpose of being solid husband, father, etc., which provides real purpose and meaning in life they just go around fulfilling their desires as they want to in all ways and that lets them run amok and it doesn't do them any good but yet who is seriously hurt by it women Mhm. Mhm. So this would be something whereby if you close the book on it and really close the book and in in a high value um my bad kind of way. And what I mean by that is that he reached out to you on Facebook wanting to friend you. Now, here's the deal. He wants you to be there as maybe something to shoot for eventually when he's out of the confusion. Or who knows what? You're a pretty puppy. So, of course, we all want, you know, I'm part of a a puppy group on Facebook because I just want to look at the pictures. (laughs) Right? That's what they do in all ways in every way possible, filling their lives with pretty puppies. And he will want that. Here's your opportunity to do it one last time for it to have any lasting effect and to possibly, and I'm talking a really long time, down the road, when he feels again that he's possibly a peacock. Okay, it would be something a la, uh, Mike, I saw that you reached out to me for friending on Facebook. I appreciate that you would want to be friends, 
but I realize that I have given you a lot of mixed signals. I'm really, I've really um, moved on from this, and I'm not interested in just a f friendship with men. You want to put with men, because what he thinks you do with him, you do with all men. And you are not going to have just a friendship with him. I'm sure the, the chemistry is off the charts, and you don't want that just with him. In, in other words, you're telling me you don't even want to date somebody who doesn't have a, a bachelor's degree or is of your ilk or whatever it is. So I dare say you're likely not going to have him as a friend, correct? Correct. Exactly. So you just call a spade a spade. I, you know, again, my bad kind of, um, not that it's your fault, but just you have to take on the ownership of things in the relationship realm in terms of that little text you sent him about the Facebook. And no harm, no foul on your end. I really do, again, wish you all the best. Uh, take care. Have a great 2021. Have a great summer. That's it. And then when he reaches out to you, which he absolutely will, you must do no contact until. People ask me, well, how long? <laughs> until. Until there is a significant texting is not the texting is done when a man is self-soothing or amusing himself. It's his action. He will move heaven and earth if he is really ready to do something different. It will be different, and you do it until serious difference. Any answering of anything in between will get you nothing. Nothing. More of the same. Because it's not amusing and self-soothing to us. Every time he reaches out to you and even gets an answer, it's amusing and self-soothing to him. It's not as a woman. At all. Ergo, another difference. Huge, vast difference. Men, women. And we must show ourselves to be a worthy opponent. You've done this to me all this time. You've played with me in this way. Now, you don't say it that way. You just say, not interested, basically, in a very nice, high-valued way. I take ownership of being confusing and kind of stringing this out. But I'd like to leave it here. I'm not interested in being friends on Facebook, and being friends really in, in any way. Again, not about you as a person, just not what I'm into in my life. All the best. Have a great summer, Liz. And then you follow through with that action. Does that make sense? And you think he'll reach out? Yes. You think he'll reach out, though, if I say that? No question. <laughs> You know why? Because you did it before in a, in a manner of sorts, and you answered mm -hmm. again. They always go by past history. And it is a challenge to get you to answer. This is what women must understand. That alone is fun. It is titillating. It is a challenge. It makes him wonder when you're going to answer. Maybe not this time. Okay, I try again. That's interesting because I just find it really amusing that um, he does use different forms to try to get my attention, and he always does seem to come back around. And, you know, if it's not a message through 
Instagram, it's a text. And now it's like we've never been friends on Facebook, never been connected on Facebook. And then all of a sudden, like, what, a couple hours before I do this podcast with you, like, he, he sends me a friend request on Facebook. <laughs> yes. But do not infuse that level of interest as anything more than almost indulging in fantasy on his end. He doesn't feel a peacock for you. But let me tell you, pigeons want the same women as peacocks do. They just don't go after them and they don't stay with them and they don't. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It's hurtful to us. And I'm not saying he's a bad guy at all. I don't know. You don't know, really. But there's nothing indicating he's a bad guy. But I do want you to take in anyone here. Take in the man's history. He's 38. Where is he in his life? What's his history? What's his family background? Relationship-wise. All of these things have influence. How achieved is he? Because that's how the man values himself. And he is only going to be a peacock vis-a-vis the woman he's with. And you know, without even taking the test, that he is not a peacock for you. Correct? Correct. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I think I realized it, too, and why I was kind of um, a little hesitant. And again, like, he was the first guy that I wanted to date with that I was, I mean, I was excited. I mean, he's very attractive. He's got a great physique. He's you know, I mean, we had great conversation. He opened up to me. He was very vulnerable. A lot of a lot of great things, right? But like, yes, I like you said, the red flags for me with him were the issue of his substance abuse, the not great family, you know, upbringing. Um, so those were things. That, but I, and that's where I was like, I don't, I don't know if this is somebody that I could. I see where he's striving to try to be better. Um, by, you know, going back and, you know, getting his, completing his degree and all this stuff, right, and um, obviously dealing with his substance issues and um, just wanting to be a better person. But, yeah, I don't think I, where I'm at and what I've accomplished in my life and, you know, my background and I come from a great family and everything, um, I'm, you know, very stable family, um, and just, it's, we're just very different. And so – that's where I was like, okay, could I have fun with him and have it be casual and something while my divorce is pending and while I'm, you know, in this flux of not really finding anybody else at the moment that, you know, piques my interest. Is it possible to have anything with someone like him? um, Absolutely. Absolutely. You can have something with him that I believe will go seriously awry, seriously quickly, and you'll have another heartbreak. Mm -hmm. All you need to do at any time is reach out to him and say, I want to see you. Guess what happens? (laughs) He's easy. Uh-huh. Yeah. But But then I'll get hurt, yeah. He'll do that. Not very much because he's a consumer. In other words, you won't have another date like you had. When you say fun, a man quickly, you know, we can't straddle the categories. Do you understand what I mean by that? You're going to have to have sex. Mm -hmm. Where does that get you, right? Right. Yeah, I guess, I mean, and I'm not that I wouldn't be opposed to that with him, but I'm just, yeah, it's it's tough, right? Because I guess for me, it's like, I am looking for that person that is, you know, my forever, um, because I've already been married, been there, done that, and I know what I want, 
and then what are you doing? Somebody that, then what are you doing? Well, with <laughs> I guess you see, you just said is, what you want. You just said what you want. You see, right. we have You're to right. be seriously clear because mm-hmm. he's as confused as you are unclear. Mm-hmm. That makes for you see, we are the mechanics of relationships. We guide them. We are the GPS. And you had no GPS set whereby he could understand it and get it because he's a man. We know that if you spend time with him, you just said he's super attractive. You spend time with him. You have sex with him. Within three times of that, if not much earlier, you are bonded. You feel something that bonds you to him and you want more. You want more. Mm -hmm. And we think, okay, well, it's going to go down the line and where could it lead? It doesn't work that way for men. He sees you, spends time with you, you have sex, it changes nothing for him. Nothing. That's what's so awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess in the beginning I thought that he could be somebody that could have been a great partner. Um, But then, you know, just watching his behavior and these other two women and how he keeps going flipping back and forth between them. And um, I just, yeah, that was a huge turn off. <laughs> so let it turn you off. You don't say any of that. You don't show your hand in this poker game. You just, as a worthy opponent, you say, oh, I just don't choose to play this game. No harm, no foul. I'm just not going to be on this court. I'm going over here, being on another. But, yes, we don't know whether he will come up and be a, a peacock eventually. But nothing from what you have told me so far would indicate that. He's trying. Yes, he's bettering his life. Bless him. Fantastic. But different realms here. Yes, he's getting over substance abuse. And yes, he's, um, you know, might be going back and getting his degree and um, whatever. And he's a super hot guy. If we as women could just have sex with super hot guys (laughs) and not bond, wouldn't life be wonderful? Oh, my God, yes. (laughs) Right? It would be so wonderful. However, and it it maddens men because they don't get it, because they don't have it in them. They seriously don't get it except intellectually, just like we intellectually know that men don't. It doesn't matter how much time he spends with you. It doesn't matter how much sex. It doesn't matter how great the sex is. Sometimes the more off the charts the sex is, the more he cannot put you in the first category, so he'll never marry you anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm not here to make things rosy. I'm here to help women win in what is most profound in life and get what they really deserve. Now, you desire him. I get that. Um, You know, some women can actually say, you know, I want to have that and I want to have that experience and after my divorce and not having sex with anybody else, I'm going to go for it and then I'm going to cut it off because I know where it's going to lead for me. Mm -hmm. You have to know yourself and, you know, that is a woman who's few and far between 
because when he's all, you know, wanting, you know, to get another hit from you, right? It's like a drug. There is nothing other than heroin that they've proven is as powerful. And that's born <laughs> in us. <laughs> it's born in us. It is that mating instinct to keep the uh, the species going. I mean, you have to have the strength of an Iron Man not to go back for more. It's like getting over, and they've done studies in the brain that it is as, in that kind of um, scenario we're talking about, that sex is as addictive as heroin. The brain chemicals that are released. And so sometimes we just have to say, you know, that's heroin, so I can't go near it. It depends. You know, some people experiment with drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully not heroin. Right. But they experiment with other drugs, and they can handle it and do it. You have to really know yourself. Can I just say, you know, hey, want to do this? You, you do it, and then you say, I have to ask you something. Mike, we had a really fun time. This was off the charts. I'm going to ask you to, to bear with me here, and let's say we had one fun time and leave it here. And he'll be like, look at you like you have two heads. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe maybe it is the fact that you know, um, yeah. Like I was, you know, married with you know with the same person for so many years, and uh, finally had the you know nerves to put myself out there. Had this amazing connection. He's you know very attractive. There was a lot of physical chemistry, and so I think there's something about him where I'm like, oh my gosh, like what would it be like, right? And but then I know deep down internally because. I am not the type of girl to like sleep around that I would feel like I would get attached and I would get hurt. Right. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but why can't I just have some fun too? <laughs> exactly. But what we want, see, and, and you had mentioned it, you'd said, you know, well, I want this with the possibility of more maybe down the road. See, men don't deal in any of that because again, black and white for the male brain in one category or the other. And if you go down that road and you show him how you've treated me and how things have been, I'm willing to have sex with you. Guess what category you go in? The second one. Exactly. And that's what's so damning about it because it's like, you know, there is no such category, but right. in the male brain, there is, and it's exceedingly difficult to get out of it. Now, you can if you've been with somebody in a relationship, but it takes a lot of work. It takes commitment and time. And I dare say, you are telling me, and, and what I want you to really take away from this today is that if you are working with a counselor, and you are not working on the fact that you are attracted to and attracting and spending your time with another pigeon, that's something to really look at. Mm hmm Yeah. So I appreciate you doing this today because I think it's it's super helpful for everybody because, see, we all share these experiences. There's not a woman out there who has listened to you today who doesn't get it, I dare say. Even one that maybe she's older and she's been married for 30 years. She's like, oh, my God, yeah, what I'd love to have, you know, a hot, you know, uh, trainer to have sex with, or whatever. There's not a woman out there who hasn't done something like, you know, yeah, I'm just going to go have fun and then been burnt. 
Mm -hmm. There's, you know, it, it, we run the gamut. And these, uh, like, like you said, you know, more of this information needs to get to women to really understand men so that we can really put in our lives, you know, what it is that we really want. And if you say, I want, for example, and this is what's so hard about being in a situation like yours. Okay, you've just, you're young, you went through a, a divorce. And now you want to maybe, okay, I do want a, another marriage down the road. Um, I do want a committed thing. Um, do you want children, Liz? Yeah. Okay. So you would need to then give yourself a set amount of time. In other words, if you want to have fun with this man, you have to, I mean, do a lot of deep work on, I will do that, not expect anything from him, and then get him out of my life. Because it will not bode well for you. And would you say that second, um, or what, that phrasing you said uh, earlier about um, where you're like, oh, we're going to do this fun, this one time and that's it? <laughs> Um, would that kind of be what you would say um, so that I don't get that emotionally bonded and hurt? Well, you also have to know yourself. I mean, a woman can be emotionally bonded and hurt. I mean, you already are in some ways. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it. True. And that's why I say you have to be very, very careful. If you have sex with him and it is fantastic – what is that going to be like to then not get your heart? I mean, it's almost physiologically impossible for most women. It is the rare eclipse of a woman who can do it. Mm -hmm. That's all I can leave you with because it ultimately will be, you know, your choice and... And then you see, you know, um, but again, you can, yes, you can do that. You can say, I wanted to, I wanted to see you, you know, obviously there was some chemistry here. This is after the fact, okay? When he says, well, I'll call you, I want to see you, blah, blah, blah. And you say, you know, this was really wonderful and we had such a good time. And, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, you know, our lives are going on, in different paths. It's not going to happen, though, because I, I just don't see it for you. I mean, can you mm -hmm. really envision you doing that? <laughs> Probably not. Right. Because <laughs> I, I feel like if, if, if I was, it would have already happened. True. Yes, I agree. And also, that's the kind of thing, like, for example, you are halfway around the world on vacation, and you meet a guy like that, and he's there for three weeks, and so are you, and you do. And then, you know, he's going to live in a whole different country or whatever. That would be a much easier, let's close the book on this because it's, there's just no good that's going to come of it. I'm going to be hurt as the woman here. But he's in your town. There, you know, he is showing you what he has been willing to do. There is no possibility of more. It will be this plus sex. Yeah, his effort level is, uh, is like, so pathetic. <laughs> it's not pathetic. No, you know what it is? It's effort level for a woman in the first category. It's also a little confusing to him. Uh, the woman in the first category would immediately, the very first time, he ghosted you don't follow up with texts. He's ghosted you. That's it. It's brutal. I understand that. It's harsh. Mm -hmm. But it gets us nowhere. Just more of the same. And all you will have is his level. And once you have sex, you will have less except for 
the initiating for sex. Yeah. I think based on what you've told me to say, I think I would probably do that, you know, thanks for reaching out or wanting to be friends with me on Facebook kind of thing. Um, would you suggest, since he just did that today, um, that I wait a little while so it doesn't mm-hmm. look like I... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like and a week or two or... It can be however long you want it to be. Um, you can even wait then, I guess, until he reaches out, which he will do again. Uh, hey, did you get my my Facebook request? And you can answer then. You can say, uh, uh, hi, Mike. Yes, I did get it. I I trust you'll understand that I'm not really interested in a friend relationship. There's no uh, animosity. I there's no anger. Um, I'm just moving on with my life. Uh, My bad for if I've confused you at all, but I like to leave things here. I wish you all the best in love and life. Have a great summer. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you start. And this can reset things so there would be no confusion when he comes back. Now, he'll do it, and to the degree that he does it, you have to wait until you cannot answer at all any, 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 any. I can't even stress it enough. Women say, well, that's mean, or that's nice, or no, no, no. We're the opponent. It's the language the man speaks. And if you want... Any time down the road, when he seriously gets it together, he's been to an ashram and he comes back and he's now CEO of some <laughs> company and he's, you know what I mean? Like he has it all together. <laughs> he's on Super Soul, you know, talking to Oprah about his transformation or something, right? Right. But that's it. And, but, but we don't know. But you're saying, I'm leaving it here. I'm a worthy opponent. I'm Steph Curry. I only play at the NBA level. I only play with other, with Draymond Green. You you, you see? Yeah. You know what? The other thing that's been super helpful um, in, like, really consuming your information, um, and I, again, I truly, like, cannot stress this enough that you're the, the like what you're teaching I feel like every single woman needs your information <laughs> because it also helps to really um like have a true sense of self-worth because I already have always kind of been the type of woman that I am like this is my standards and if you can't meet them then F off essentially. <laughs> um, but your your work has truly made me like really understand and value myself even more. So I want to say thank you for that. Well, thank you because that's that's music to my ears. It's why I do what I do. It's absolutely why I do what I do. I love that. And yes, you are everything to a man, you have so much. Every single woman has a wealth and, and a deep well of everything that a man wants. And we have to be, you know, if if you think of yourself really as a diamond, would you just let anybody handle you? No, right? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only someone who proves their trustworthiness, who proves they're they're honest and are going to be above board and are going to, you know, treat you and keep you safe and all of it, right? If you really think of yourself as the diamond, and you are. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it can leave us wanting at times, but you really have to think about 
the, the, the law of polarity in the universe, which is with everything negative, there is a positive. With every positive, there is a negative. That having our cake and eating it too, so to speak, in this situation mm-hmm. with a consumer, it typically for the woman leads to nothing but heartbreak and risking devaluing yourself, which can be really harmful. So, so for you, Liz, you know all this about yourself. So that's where the work for you will lie in what is it about the pigeons that I'm drawn to and want to help and where I'm connecting to them. And that tells me that you are a deep souled person. You are, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have this depth, you want to be, you know, you're a woman. So you are all about connection, cooperation, and caretaking. And when it comes in some beautiful manly package, it can be like, you know, napalm. And you just have to be careful for it because it it will only lead to another situation like you had and you don't deserve that. And I I think that's another big fear of mine. And I, I do feel like I'm kind of, almost like not deathly afraid, but I mean, I, I am, I'm like afraid to, I guess sometimes like put myself out there because of the heartache and pain I went through with my ex and just finding out, you know, just all the, you know, just betrayal and deceit and lying and all of that, you know, and it's just like, how do you trust another human being after going through all of that? Right. And, and okay. I know there are good men out there. <laughs> yes. But, but, hard, but let me just you know. answer that to, to it is hard, but here's the thing. You certainly have an inclination about this one that you wouldn't lay all your money on the roulette table that he would be a good bet mm-hmm. for what you're saying. No. Right. No, he's not. He's mm-hmm. already from history... And what he has shown you over the past year, what you're seeing on social media, all that he's doing, no, not a good bet. Because here's what a man who could potentially be a good bet. He will, when he is in the state of being a consumer, and he puts you, even if it's confusing, he puts you in the first category. You know what he does? He leaves you alone completely. Mm. That's what a man who has certain values and is of a certain ilk, because all men, even the highest level man in terms of his being evolved and knowing himself, he will be a consumer At some point in his life, absolutely. But he will behave differently as that consumer. He will, after that first meeting, and this is what women, you know, get confused about. Oh, my God, we had such a great first date. He was so nice. He was so gentlemanly. He was so respectful. He, we had chemistry. He was amazing. We had an amazing time. And then I never heard from him again. I say, look up to the heavens and say, thank you. Thank you for that type of man. It isn't that he didn't want you. He put you in first category and you will not hear from him ever again unless the stars align that he becomes a buyer because that's just a state of being that has nothing to do with you. And he may absolutely reach out to you. It could be five years. I had one after 30 years. Wow. It, yeah, all manner of years in between. It can happen. But that's what good men do. 
So when you don't hear after a date, and the man has been everything, which he tried to do a number of times, he just ghosted. That's why we don't reach out when they ghost. Right. Well, and initially, um, just that first week when he was telling about his brother's um, friend that passed, I just did like a, hey, everything okay kind of thing. And then after that is when, you know, I didn't, I didn't say anything to him for like five months Mm -hmm. and that's when he reached back out. Yeah. So five months, but you see nothing changed Mm -hmm. and that's the only thing you ask. That's the only thing when they reach out, you wait and you wait and you wait and then has something changed. That's the only time the question is okay in text. Mm Hmm. Because it stops them short. It puts them back in, oh, my God. Right. Because that's clear. First category. And how would one go about saying that? (laughs) Just how I said it. Okay. Has anything changed? Has something changed? We're the opponent. You walked off the court and you didn't... Tell me any reason why for five months, you see, or four months, but whatever, same thing, yeah, (laughs) yeah, so I know this was helpful for so many people, as I said, and I thank you so much again for doing it, Liz, and let's hope that the next guy in your life is going to be showing you something. This is a this is a tough transitionary period for you. I understand, and and I I really am so glad you came on today. Thank you. It was super helpful. And yeah, I think it's hard sometimes to know like what to do in that in between time because I get it. You know, like you don't have to be completely done with the divorce and completely healed. There's no one. I don't think any. You know, it takes healing takes a long time, right? And, but it's finding that right partner that, you know, willing and is at the place in their life, you know, and uh, to willing to work through that. Um, and so I guess for me, I don't feel like until my divorce is like truly finalized, unless some amazing man came into my life <laughs> between now and then, um, that I just feel like I can really, you know, move forward, I guess. Well, Best of luck with this, and I will leave you with this, that healing is typically in the emotional realm is not a finite thing. And if we try and look at it as finite, we feel like we haven't achieved something. And that isn't typically very good for us. We need to feel, no, I am in the process of becoming. It's not just healing. Mm -hmm. I'm moving through something because healing indicates it's over, it's never thought about again, it's a done thing. No, it's kind of like grief. There will always be little spikes and little hits and little, it's not completely reopening a wound But it's not like a wound that, you know, you skinned your knee when you were six years old. Do you see it now? No. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, It's completely healed. It's physically healed. Emotionally, we don't work like that. So don't. Uh, do yourselves the disfavor of thinking of it like that because then it's like, ah, why am I not over this? Why am Mm -hmm. I not healed from this? No, it's process and that's all Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so go forward and know that and you're you're going to do very well well thank you i really appreciate you doing uh, taking the time and talking to me and giving me all that amazing advice and Mm -hmm. insight you're welcome thank you for listening to make him wonder if you've benefited from today's conversation please subscribe and share Connect with Coach Paula at MakeHimWonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, 
and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.